I didn't get rid of that camera to just be without a second camera. I got another one. It is a Sony. More to come. What's up, YouTube? I'm gonna get one thing out of the way just so you don't think I'm clickbaiting you. I did switch from a Canon EOS M to a Sony A6000. Yes, I'm already a Sony user and have been for a long time, but in the most literal sense, I did switch from a Canon to a Sony. I didn't title the video to be clickbait. I did it because I wanted to keep you in suspense of what I purchased. So that being out of the way, why did I sell the Canon EOS M to buy an A6000 from Sony? So without further ado, let's get into it. Let me first address the fact that the Canon EOS M is a really great camera for certain people. That people is not me, but I do not have massive ill will feelings towards the Canon EOS M. It really just did not fit my needs. And so that actually starts off with the first reason why I made the switch. And that is the fact that the Sony A6000 out of box has the features that I need that the Canon EOS M has only when you access Magic Lantern. I know this sounds super weird, but I'm not one for modding because I like to really use things how they're intended. You find the best performance when you use something how it's intended. And I felt everything that I used the Canon EOS M to get the most out of it was something I did to the camera to make it better. One of the things I loved was cine style. The other thing that I used was focus peaking. That's Magic Lantern. If you see any videos about the EOS M, it's all about like filming raw or shooting 2.5K or even some, I think I've had some people do like 4K with it but it's only with that Magic Lantern software. And for me, all I found myself using was focus peaking. But guess what has built-in focus peaking and I don't need additional software? Bam, the Sony A6000. So that's one of the reasons was I felt like I really couldn't get the best out of the EOS M until I put Magic Lantern or some other software on it, whereas I could get a really good picture, really nice performance out of the A6000 right out of box. Now with that, I'll say, if you like to mod things, by all means, get the EOS M. That's actually the reason I got it is because I wanted to kind of dabble in, you know, modding something, putting plugins and building a rig. And then I just got frustrated with it because it really just wasn't easy to get the stuff that I wanted. So that's one of the most simplest reasons why I made the switch was I really wanted something that it had what I needed out of box rather than having to make all these additional adjustments. So that's reason number one. That also can play a part in the reason number two, which is battery life. Because I had to use Magic Lantern so much for focus peaking, I noticed that the battery life on the EOS M just drained really fast. Not to mention, they're small batteries to begin with. I felt like I was constantly just rotating batteries into the Canon EOS M. And that's saying something. One of the biggest things people have complaints about Sony APS-C cameras is the battery life. So having something where I can film for the entire evening with the A6000 is just a plus. So battery life is another reason why I decided to move away from the Canon EOS M to the Sony A6000. Just a little bit better battery life there because again, you're using those features how it's intended. So my next reason is gonna sound kind of weird coming from a Sony user, and that is the articulating screen. <laughs> if you've ever shot on a Canon EOS M, there's no articulating screen. You have to hook up a monitor to get any type of angle. So if you're doing low shots, you might as well have a monitor with you. With the Sony A6000, I at least have a screen that can flip up a little bit. So if I'm doing a low shot, I can still see my composition and still see my picture. So having that articulating screen, even though it's not fully articulating, like everyone complains about, just really makes life a little bit easier. The other factor is slow motion. Now the A6000 does not have 120 frames per second, but it does have 60 frames per second. And so if I wanted to do 1080 at 60 frames per second, that gives me a little bit of slow motion. Now I'm trying to venture more and more away from slow motion, especially trying to get more 4K footage. I'm trying to get away from slow motion. Product shots, you kind of 
it's kind of by nature, you do a lot of slow motion. So having something that has 60 frames per second is really helpful. Whereas the Canon EOS M just does 1080 up to 30 frames. Now I've toyed around with 30 frames and trying to slow it down just a little bit so it seems slow motiony, but having something at 60 frames per second is really helpful for product shots or really just any B-roll where I want to slow it down just a little bit. 60 frames per second on the Sony a6000 was also a big factor in the switch. Another factor is the fact that the Sony a6000 is a little bit more of a solid second camera. The whole reason why I bought a second camera was to kind of test things out, create content for you all about these cameras, and also serve the multi purpose of having potentially a second camera, a second angle. I'll put up a shot that I did of an Instagram story the other night where I did a two angle system. I thought it came out really nice. And so having a solid second camera, being able to rely on good autofocus with the Sony a6000 with my Sony native glass was really a plus for me. Being able to use this on multiple angles and having a solid second camera, whether it's an overhead camera, side camera, whatever it may be, just really helpful. And that actually plays into my next reason, which is the fact of I already own Sony glass. I'm already in the Sony ecosystem, as I said at the beginning of the video. With that, I can use the 24 millimeter from Rokinon. I can use the Tamron 28 to 75. I can use any of the other glass that I have because I'm already in this ecosystem. And so because I have that native glass, I can better rely on the Sony a6000 to give me better autofocus, which plays a part into it being a more solid second camera. And so that really is also a deciding factor is the fact that I do have all of this Sony glass already. Now, the sad thing about that is when I bought my a7 III, I sold all my APS-C glass, which I'm still trying to decide if I wanna rebuy some of it. I'm almost tempted to stay with full frame glass because it can be used fully on my a7 III as well as on my a6000. We'll see, I may try to pick up the Sigma 16 millimeter again. Let's spend some money. <laughs> so I've already touched on a couple points. Let's recap. You have the fact that you get more out of box performance out of the A6000, better battery life and articulating screen, 60 frames per second, and being already in the Sony ecosystem. But this last point, I'm gonna pull back the veil of this channel and really YouTube in general to kind of give you the last reason. As a YouTube content creator, when I'm on the fence about something, a part of that deciding factor is you all. What are you wanting to see? And one way I find that out is by using YouTube's search feature. I do this all the time when I'm planning what I'm going to talk about. I take something that I'm interested in, I take something that I want to review and check it against potentially what people are searching. If nobody's searching for it, it may just be like a labor of love type video where I'm like, I really want people to know about this even though probably nobody wants to know about this. And then sometimes, and you'll see with my high performing videos, they're ones that I've researched that they're actually what people want to see. And so you may ask, well, okay, how does that determine between the Canon EOS M and the Sony a6000? If you go right now and search for Sony, one of the top results is a Sony a6000. The Sony a6000 is still one of the most searched cameras on YouTube. Honestly, I'm excited of creating content for those people that are searching for the a6000 being able to give you photography examples, video examples, uh, maybe certain lenses adapted on in the A6000, maybe full frame lenses on the A6000. The other one that's being highly searched is the A7 III. Between these two cameras, I feel like I'm better positioned to create content that you want to see. And so that really came down to being one of the deciding factors. If I go search for Canon, Canon EOS M is not even in the top search results. Now, there is a cult following around the EOS M, and so there's kind of a trade-off there, but for me, I like the Sony system, and all the other reasons kind of combined with the searchability just really put the nail in the coffin for me. The purchase of this camera is just as much for me as it is you, and how I can answer questions, do some research around the A6000. So if that interests you, if that excites you to hear more about the A6000, if you're not subscribed, this is a great opportunity to do so, so that when I post future videos about the A6000, you'll be informed. The more you know, in that little graphic from back in the day, the more you know, the little star. Is that the more you know? Yeah. Was that, I think that was where, where like, this is your brain and this is your brain on drugs commercials came from, was the more you know. So yeah, the more you know. This purchase is not all rainbows and butterflies. It, there are some negatives to buying the A6000 over the Canon EOS M. 
one of which is sound. I cannot stress to you how much I'm frustrated with the fact that I cannot plug a mic into the Sony a6000. Now I knew that going into it. I think in the last like week I've, it's just kind of hit me and it's just, ugh. I, I recorded a video of like bedtime with the family and there was just some clicking from the internal audio and I wanted to be like, oh, it should be easy to go and find an external camera, like a third party, no, they don't exist. So you have to buy the Sony proprietary shotgun mic and that's just super lame to me. Unless it's like a studio scenario like this where I have a mic and external audio, you're probably not gonna see the Sony a6000 be my main camera for serious projects. It will probably be more of a second cam, a B cam, uh, for those projects just because of that audio quality is not there. Now I may try to test out the proprietary mic from Sony just to kind of give you some results and how it can perform, but that is a glaring negative of this purchase is the audio is just going to be meh. The other thing that I'll miss is cine style. The A6000 has a neutral profile and you can get it pretty neutral so you can color grade it really well. But after making that video where I showcase the Seven Artisans lens, I really liked that B-roll footage. I really enjoy how that color grading came out. So I will miss that, the Sydney style profile, whereas I'm working more with like a barely flat picture on the A6000. But outside of that, I'm really pumped, really excited to be working with A6000. I'm really pumped to produce some content for you all around the A6000 as well as Big Brother A7 III. So I know I'm pumped, but if you're pumped to get more content about the A6000 or the A7 III, again, consider subscribing to the channel, maybe hit that bell icon, that way you can be notified when I post a new video. I know there are a lot of reasons why I switched. I hope all those made sense to you and I hope all of those kind of answered your questions why I switched from a Canon EOS M to a Sony A6000. So with that, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you're excited to see more about the A6000 or the A7 III or any of the lenses that I posted a couple weeks ago or gear that may be coming up, consider subscribing. I realize that was a really long-winded way of asking you to subscribe, but all of those are good and valid reasons. Question of the day for the comment section below is what would you like to see about the A6000? There are a few things that I'm mulling over, things like night photography, video test, just general like B-roll projects. Uh, what would you like to see about the A6000? Let me know. Thank you guys for joining. I'll see you here next time. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Peace. Like a studio scenario like this where I have drinking. <laughs> Unless it's like a while you're in the comment section, remember if you want to win, why can I not say this? Dear God. I can't not the canon. There's a little dust bunny floating about. Anyways, I've lost all control. Now with that being said.